G'day guys, welcome back to another video in the uh, review series that I'm doing for the EcoFlow Delta Max 2000. Now, uh, in the first two videos I've done an unboxing and we load tested it here in the uh, garage in the studio. And then in the second video I actually went out and did a camping trip and, and an overnight trip and just tried it out in the real world to see how it worked. And so if you haven't watched those videos, um, I'll leave a link below or up here somewhere anyway. You can go and watch those catch up. Um, now in the last video, um, we had a couple of questions come up and um, a few things that I, I wanted to try to sort of get more information on, try and resolve. And the, the goal of this video today is to just focus on um, answering those questions and uh, seeing what solutions we've come up with in the last sort of week and a half since, since the last video. So one of the questions uh, that came up that I had uh, was about charging it while driving. Now, um, when you charge, one of the great things about um, these systems is that they charge very fast on an AC outlet, on a 240 volt outlet. All right, so what I'm gathering from this uh, is that it's at 31% charge and we've got um, 1136 watts going into it at the moment nothing coming out and it's going to take about an hour to reach full charge you can also plug up to 800 watts of solar panels in them into the uh, dc port in the back which will also charge very fast probably in three four five hours something like that depending on how much sun you've got all right guys just doing a little bit of an experiment here I've got a nice bit of full sun on the back of the house here, even though it's the middle of winter and uh, it's quite cool. We've got plenty of sunshine. And as you can see, we're getting 300 watts out of the 400 watt panel, um, which is pretty good because it's not, uh, you know, it's not summer. The sun's not, uh, you know, high in the sky. It's very low, but there's no uh, shade or anything on the panel. So. 300 watts, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Um, but one of the, the challenges that I came across that would apply mostly to me and people like me who do sort of a really road trip focus where it's lots of, you know, short overnight sort of stops um, where, you know, solar might not be the, you know, the realistic option because uh, most of the day you're sort of driving or you're, you know, you're, you're getting to and from camp versus sitting there in the sun all day and able to sort of generate heaps of solar power. Um, one of the challenges was the fact that the uh, 12 volt DC charging port um, in the Delta box is um, is a cigarette lighter socket. It goes basically straight into the cigarette lighter socket in the car, and it can really only draw about 120 watts maximum power um, to charge with, and that actually takes quite a long time to charge. So, um, in the test that we did, I drove for about an hour and a half, and uh, we only put about 7% of power back into the into the battery. Um, so what that would mean would I basically need to be driving really all day, you know, um, just to, to sort of put a majority of the charge back in. And um, so I, I asked, uh, I, I posed the question to you guys in the last video. Have anybody got any ideas about um, what we can do about that? Had a heap of great responses. Thanks very much. Um, one of the responses uh, I think has hit the nail on the head. That came from uh, Russell Stevens. And uh, Russell, thanks for that. He's, he's basically suggested um, use an actual inverter, a 12 volt to 240 volt inverter. Um, so while we're driving, we're actually um, converting the 12 volt output of the, of the alternator of the car into 240 volts and then charging the Delta box with a 240 volt inlet, which is a much faster charging system. And I think that's pretty much the way we're going to go. Um, I actually put that to uh, Echo Flow. I, I, I emailed them the question and, and just wanted to make sure that they agreed that that was the best way to go. And they did. They came back and confirmed that, yep, that, that's the way to do it. I also asked them the question about sort of uh, stacking up a solar panel, like a solar panel on the roof of the vehicle and output from the, um, a direct output from the, the uh, 12 volts from the alternator in the car. Could we channel that into the DC port into the back of this and sort of, you know, directly charge it from that DC um, input and uh, they said no it's not the way to do it the inverter to 240 volts would be the better way to go so that's what we're gonna do so I've actually um, gone out and, and bought a uh, Renergy 1000 watt uh, inverter and um, it's a brand new one and that was about $169 so not a fortune in the overall scheme of things they do make bigger ones and, and realistically I could I could charge, I could put almost 2000 watts of power into this in, in charging, so I could have got a bigger one, but I figured, you know, it's about double the price, um, and 
uh, I don't want to be drawing too much out of the car while I'm driving. I know it's, it's fully adjustable, and, and when we set it up, I'll show you how that works, but um, it is fully adjustable. But I thought, realistically, if I can get sort of 800 to 1,000 watts of charging power while we're driving, then that's going to you know reduce the, the time to recharge it down into a, a matter of a few hours, and that should be plenty. And again, it's a weight thing. You know, a 2,000 watt... Um, inverter is significantly heavier than a 1000 watt and, and everything I'm doing with this sort of project is about uh, managing weight and, and saving it where I possibly can so even if it's a couple of kilos difference it, it all adds up. So I've gone with the 1000 watt and um, so the basic just, just to sort of give you a rough idea how it's going to work so the idea is that I'll mount this in the back of the vehicle somewhere around where this will go um, it'll be directly a, a, a positive uh, cable will go directly to the, the second battery the, um, the the deep cycle battery now that battery is being charged I've got a, a, an isolator in the car um, so that w when I get in the car I start the engine the first the isolator sends all the alternator power to the starter battery and recharges it only takes you know seconds it doesn't take very long to put the charge back in that I've just taken out by starting the engine and then it clicks over and starts recharging the second deep cycle battery um, you know which you can you can basically run that deep cycle battery completely flat overnight if you need to um, and then it'll you know recharge it while you're driving so we'll be tapping into that one so that um, this won't be doing any charging from the main um, starter battery uh, and, and while the, the starter battery is being charged this won't be being charged hopefully that makes sense um, yeah so that's the idea we'll run a cable from here you know from the front of the car to the back of the car um, and then we'll run one from the earth to a solid earth point in the back of the car then on this side we will plug the uh, AC cable from here into here and it even has one thing I liked about this is it's got actually got a remote switch um, so which plugs into the into the energy box there so I can mount that anywhere I like I could actually mount that under the dashboard and you know turn it on and off when I'm driving um, so if I'm you know going to drive an hour or two I can have it running if I'm going to pull up and stop for half an hour I can just switch it off so it's it's not charging um, without the engine running so it's just I thought it was a good extra um, feature to have also came with a couple of um, battery cables which this one might be good because I could probably use that at the back uh, where this will be mounted but that's obviously not long enough to get to the front from the front to the back of the car so I'll have to get another one of those um, okay so what I've done also is uh, for the the first thing I do is test it I'm just going to plug this in up, up at the front of the car and just do a test to make sure it actually works the way I think it's going to work uh, and then assuming it does then I'll go out and actually buy a longer positive cable you know about seven or eight meters long so what I've done is I've run the power uh, the battery down to 89 percent and I uh, did that just by plugging in the uh, little fan heater there uh, which sucks about 2,000 watts and, and, and drains 10 took, took 10 percent out of this fairly quickly uh, so now we've got 10 percent to put back in so we'll be able to sort of get an idea of um, uh, how you know how fast this is going to charge now, as I said before the, the charging input I'll just swing it around so we can have a look Now I'll just put the GoPro here so you can actually see up close what I'm looking at and uh, start on that. Now if you have a look on the back here you'll see we've got this switch here fast and slow or slow slash custom. Now the idea is that if you have it on fast it's going to draw the maximum amount of AC current that it can to recharge the battery. Um, that, so you would use that if you've got it plugged into the mains and um, and you'll want to sort of you know charge it as fast as possible that's your fast charging and um, what it's also got is a, is a custom setting slow and custom now what that does is it ena enables you to vary how much power it draws so it's not going to just pull maximum power it's going to pull whatever you set and you actually do the, um, the setting in the app um, and I'll show you how I've done that I've set it up in the app so I've got it set to uh, 800 watts so this is a variable input I can go anything from as low as uh, 200 watts all the way up to a maximum of 2000 watts. So this enables you to basically customize you know, how much power you want to be drawing from the inverter that is plugged into it or the power source, whatever that is. So in this case, I'm going to start at 800 watts because I don't want to run the uh, inverter 
at its maximum. Now it's got a peak surge power capacity of 2000 watts, but that's just when you start up something and it has a, a big surge at the start. 1000 watts is its continuous um, rated capacity. But I'm all for not sort of you know, maxing things out and, and you know, trying to you know, hit them as hard as possible. So what we'll do is we'll, I'll set it at 800 watts in the app, which means it'll, it'll when it's drawing from, from the, uh, when I've got this, this, the switch on slow custom here, it'll only draw a maximum of 800 watts um, from the AC power source. Now what we'll do is we will go out and uh, I'll just set up on the, on the Land Cruiser I've got up in the driveway here and um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll plug it in and we'll test it and see what happens. If you can hear that engine running, it's actually uh, not this car. It sounds very similar. It's the uh, Land Cruiser of the guy across the road. I'll fast forward this because you don't want to be sitting there watching me do all this. This second battery here is actually a deep cycle 100 amp hour uh, lead acid battery and it's about five or six years old and pretty much on its last legs. It doesn't hold a lot of charge anymore. Um, I'll actually replace this as part of the whole build and I'll put in a lithium 100 amp hour deep cycle which will cut some more weight out while I'm at it and uh, at least it'll give me some auxiliary power on board even when I don't have the uh, Echo Flow Delta Max with me. Uh, and yes, I know the radiator is leaking. That's why I've actually used some of the epoxy weld to try and sort of patch up the leak. But yeah, I think I need to get it brazed or hopefully not completely replaced. But uh, yeah, fixing that is one of the many things on the to-do list for this project. All right, so we've got the inverter plugged in. We've got the AC plugged into the Echo Flow Delta Max. Plug this into here. Plug it so you can see it. A little bit awkward. Look at there. Not that there's anything to actually see on this side, but now on the switch here, one is for just straight on, and two is if you're going to use it from the remote. So we're going to do it straight on. We'll just flick on and see what happens. It's clicking. And there she goes. Alright. So, we've got power going in there. Go over and have a look so I can see. Okay, so it's working exactly as I hoped it would. We've got 780 watts going in here, um, and it's obviously going to, it's drawing it all out of the second battery, so I wouldn't run it too long like this without the engine running, but I'm just in the interest of not making a lot of noise. Um, I'm going to uh, keep the engine off for a sec. So as you can see here, we're at uh, we're we're charging at 785 watts, and it's going to take us about half an hour uh, to get up to full charge in. So that's 10% in 30 minutes, um, which is yeah dramatically faster. Oh, we've got a bit of beeping going in here. I think it's probably telling me that it's running out of DC current because the battery's. It's drawing straight from the battery and uh, the alternator is not running. So I'll switch it off. Yeah, okay, so that really pretty much shows that it does work. Um, now, in the real world, I won't use this at all without the engine running um, because I want to be drawing the power from the uh, alternator, not from the second battery. It's just going to be basically passing through the second battery into the, in into the inverter box here. Um, but yeah, it shows us that it does actually work and um, we will be able to charge this uh, it was going to take uh, 30 minutes to put 10 percent back in 
uh, now it charges slower the last 10 percent is going to be the slowest charge when it's sort of down around the 30 40 50 percent mark it's charging faster and then it slows down as it gets closer to 100 percent so when when i did the test in the last video i started from about 20 percent charge and we got up to we added seven percent of charge in an hour and a half well doing it this way we'll be able to add uh, you know that last 10 percent of charge which will be the slowest part in, in a half an hour so obviously uh, you know a few hours of driving will, will, will certainly put most of the charge back in the battery now, as I said in the last video I've got a camping trip coming up in a few weeks um, which will be you know about five six seven days something like that so I'm gonna have a chance to really give this a good thorough testing you know day after day after day just to see how it really works when on a sort of a normal typical trip that I like to do but between now and then what I'm gonna do is actually get a longer uh, positive battery cable run it from here right back through the car up to the back of the car there actually install this inverter back there and um and then we'll just yeah we'll be able to use it uh, as a as a sort of an ongoing solution hopefully that's the problem solved now also in the future i might actually put some solar panels on the roof as well um maybe a couple hundred watts of solar panels on the roof i believe that you can charge take the solar current and the inverter current and both and charge the 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 um the delta max with both at the same time so uh, we might even be able to get up to a sort of a thousand or, or more watts of charging while we're driving on a sunny day um, but anyway that's a that's a, a test for the future so the other issue i had was with the induction cooktop and the fact that it was overheating um, and uh, i couldn't really figure out why it's overheated again but we're nearly there anyway so it's okay um, now I was using a small cast iron pan and I had lots of responses in the comments. Thanks very much for those as well um, All sorts of different theories there some saying cast iron really isn't the best thing to use some saying no, it should work fine Some saying you need to use a uh, smaller pan. That's you know, it's not too big You know not too big compared to the area that actually gets hot. Um, I think they're all probably potentially right um, I haven't been able to really find anything definitive and I haven't had a chance to test it anymore, but I will be taking it and we'll be testing it more thoroughly on my camping trip. Um, I'm going to take, I'm just going to take my small pan, which I used in the first video just to uh, cook a burger in that seemed to work fine. The reality is um, I wouldn't be worried about cooking a steak or something on this, which needs to be cooked hot. I'll just use the, the campfire for that and cook it on a hot plate. Uh, but you know, for cooking sort of bacon and eggs and things like that, which you know, you don't need a lot of heat. Um, they don't need to be cooked hot. So this pan is probably going to be fine for that. I will look at actually getting a, a dedicated in, induction cooktop pan, um, one that's you know designed to, to work on these things. Um, and I'll do some more research and, and, you know, I'll talk about that in future videos. But anyway, that's it for this video. Um, hit subscribe and give the video a like if you've uh, enjoyed this and want to see some more. Um, I'm going to be busy planning my camping trip over the next week or two, and uh, I'll probably make another video or two in the lead up to that. And obviously once I get going out on the road, and we'll do lots more testing and uh, yeah, we'll just get out there and, and have some fun. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.